All right, hello everybody. It is almost 11.45 p.m. on a Saturday night. I did get a good nap this afternoon, but no sleep since then. But I am happy because tonight, for the first time in quite some time, I'm going to go out and try and get some photography done. It's been a tough start to the year with the weather and clouds and wind and all those things. But tonight, out on the plains anyway, the forecast looks pretty good. Heading out in the leaf now, and we'll see how it goes. I'm cautiously optimistic. We'll see you out there. All right, since I am taking the leaf out onto the plains tonight, I have one charging stop that I'll be doing each way here in Bennett, Colorado. This is almost a brand new charger. I think it's only been here for a couple of months or something like that. It's my first time using it, but no issues here. Charge Point usually does a pretty good job, especially with their fast chargers. So we'll be here for a little bit and then continue on our way out onto the plains. <laughs> All right, I have arrived out here at the church and there is nobody else here, which I usually like that, so that's good. It does look like the sky is pretty clear here, which is what I was hoping for. I got, did get here a little bit later than I wanted to, so I'm working on getting my gear set up here. I'm gonna try and get off some shots and then we'll do some more filming. All right, so you can see my setup here with the Z6 II. And right now I'm shooting with my Tamron 35 millimeter F1.8 lens. I love that perspective. So I'm getting my first shots with that. And I've already done some test shots. So I will apologize for the dark here for a few seconds. I'm gonna squeeze off a shot so you guys can see my composition here. But there you go. You can see the church there and the Milky Way up above. So I really like this shot. I'm going to squeeze off a bunch to stack. And then I may think about putting my lantern inside to give a little bit of light on the interior of the church. But I like it a lot. So I'm going to get to work shooting here while I still have time before the moon comes up here in about 45 minutes. All right, I'm finishing up with a 35 millimeter and this is a longer exposure I tried from the foreground after setting up my little LED lantern just inside the door of the church to give it just a little pop of light inside. Now let me bring that back up real quick so you can get a better look at that and the Milky Way overhead. So I've, I've done my shot with a 35 and now I'm going to switch to my Sigma Art 14 to 24 f 2.8 lens and try and do some wider shots, maybe a vertical. I've got down to about 20 minutes before the moon comes up. So I'm gonna hurry up and do that. And then maybe try and get the foreground shots when the moon comes up, but I'll keep working this scene here while I'm here. All right, so I'll turn this off so you can see better. I have set up my vertical shot with my 14 to 24 at about 24 millimeters. So it's longer end. Um, try and get in there so you can see it a little better. We got a vertical and there it went with the Milky Way arcing up over the church. Try and bring that back up here. Of course, it's that direction now, but I'm gonna keep shooting. You kind of get the idea of what I'm doing there. And if it works out good, I'll show it to you right after this. All 
All right, as I'm gonna squeeze off my dark frames here for the stack, over there you can see the moon is just rising. It's about a 40% moon, so it's not real strong. I think even though it was already up for the last half or so of the shots I took from my noise reduction stack, it looked like it wasn't washing out detail in, in the Milky Way or any of that, so I think it's still going to come out pretty well. And on the wide lens of the Osmo, it probably looks pretty small over there, but there it is. The, the moon is rising now. So I'm going to finish off the shots for this stack. Take my foreground shot here after that. And then I'll probably be packing up for the long drive back home. But I'm glad I came out here tonight. It's been a really tough start to 2022 with weather and all that conspiring to mean that I haven't gotten out as much as I would like to start the year. So despite being kind of iffy with the cloud forecast, it's been really nice out here tonight and I'm, I'm glad I came out. But there we are. Since I didn't have the time out there that night in the field to do a more detailed walkthrough of this composition, I'll do that now as we look at the finished product. So this church out on the plains of Colorado has a front door that faces directly east underneath the bell tower there. And at the time I took this photo in April, the core of the Milky Way there, just above and to the right of the church, is more directly in the southeastern sky. So I had to position myself kind of off the back corner of the church to set up this composition. And I had had that planned ahead of time. I took this photo with my Nikon Z6 II at uh, ISO 6400. And it was at six seconds at f2.2 my Tamron 35mm f1.8 prime lens mounted via the FTZ2 adapter, since that Tamron is an F-mount lens. I took about 30 shots of the sky that I then combined with some dark frames in a piece of software called Sequitor, which is specifically designed for stacking night sky shots for noise reduction. I took those 30 stacked shots for the sky for noise reduction and combined that with a two minute exposure at f5.6 and ISO 800 for the foreground of this photo with my Goal Zero Lighthouse Mini LED Lantern also placed inside the church to give it a more natural feel and less abandoned. Because even though this, the fact that this church is nearing 110 years old, it is still maintained and cared for and used as of this day. I used my planning ahead of time to set up the shot so that the Milky Way would kind of be angling across the sky above the church and with my 35 millimeter, it would look quite large in the frame and to match the size of the church very well and capture a lot of detail looking into the heart of our galaxy. And despite the fact that there were many clouds behind me in the sky and you can see a little band of cloud just above the horizon in the distance, most of the sky above is perfectly clear and I was very thankful for that. I like the way this composition balances and I really, really love the way this one came out.
as is my usual practice, I also captured a vertical photo besides the first horizontal photo that I shared. This photo was captured, as I said in my video, with my Sigma 14 to 24 millimeter f2.8 art lens at the longest end of its zoom range. The exposure was 10 seconds at f2.8, also at ISO 6400 on my Z62 with that Sigma lens attached with the FTZ2 adapter. Now in this photo, the light coming on the horizon at the bottom left of the photo is coming from the rising moon, which came up about halfway through my stack of shots for this photo. This photo has a stack of 25 shots for the sky, again stacked for noise reduction in the program sequitur, and then imported into Photoshop, and combined with a five minute exposure at f5.6 at ISO 800 for the foreground. Now this shot, because I was tilting the lens up a little bit to get more of the vertical Milky Way in the shot with the wider angle lens, I had to do some finessing with the perspective control in Photoshop to keep the church from looking like it was falling over. But I do like the added color in this shot from the rising moon. It gives it a much more warm feel throughout the sky, as w especially along the horizon. And some of that moonlight is adding to the light from my lantern inside the church as well. It's hard to choose a favorite between the two shots for me from this night, but this one might be just slightly ahead of the other, just because of that added color from the rising moon. All right, I'm back at the charging station here in Bennett again. Came in with pretty low charge left, but made it here just fine. So time to get a boost and get ready to head back towards home. But, uh, just a little bit of commentary on tonight's adventure. I definitely glad I went out the church out there. It's it's definitely out in the middle of nowhere. Um, pretty much no light from anything out there at all of any significance. The only real light I had was as as the moon was coming up, it started to get some warm light on the horizon and cast a little bit of extra light on the landscape, but. Being only a 40% moon, it, it, even though it came up a little bit into my last stretch of shots, it did not appear to have washed out any of the Milky Way or stars very much anyway. So we'll see when I get it on the computer at home. Uh, as you will have watched in the video going through my gear, you know, the what's in my camera bag in 2022 video, I've changed out a good portion of my equipment recently and this is only my second time out shooting night photography with the new Z6 II. At least new for me. I know it's been out for a year and a half now but now, some things I like about it as opposed to my old D750. Um, manual focusing with the live view screen was really easy to do, especially with the focus peaking, focus peaking feature on the second generation of the Z6. I could do it on my old D750, but it was a little more tricky than, than what this is. I really appreciate the ability to do the ultra long exposures with the Z6 too. With built in shutter speed settings that go out to 15 minutes long if you are in manual mode. So when I'm doing my foreground exposures that are longer at a lower ISO, you know, I did the one for six minutes tonight, I did one for eight minutes, and it's nice to not have to use my phone to time those anymore and, you know, lock the shutter and then try to remember to unlock it at just the right moment. I can just set it for 300 seconds, 480 seconds, tonight, which is what I used tonight, 120 seconds for two minutes, and it just does it. I don't have to worry about keeping track of where I'm at and it actually counts down the time on the little screen on top of the camera so I know exactly where we're at in those super long exposures. Now, I really like that. Uh, tonight I used my 35 millimeter f1.8 Tamron lens and obviously I'm using the FTZ adapter to mount most of my lenses at this point. And I 
I was able to get the second generation one, which is a little smaller than the first generation adapter. Uh, my 35 millimeter Tamron Prime is the only one that does not adapt well. It refuses to autofocus. But since I only use that lens for astrophotography anyway, pretty much, it's, it's not a problem. And the shots looked great again tonight. And of course, this is the second time using the Sigma 14 to 24 art. And the first round with that one turned out really great. So I'm, I'm really optimistic for this one as well. So to wrap it up, uh, a good night out, at least to the south where I was shooting, the direction I was looking. Nice clear skies, you know, I can see as the sun is coming up now, as I kind of expected, there's plenty of clouds to the north and to the west, but I, I had what I needed as far as the weather and I'm very happy with that. A couple weeks ago I was all set to come and did a last minute check of the weather forecast and found that it had been overcome with clouds and so I stayed home. But this time, everything looked good, and so I went for it and came out here, and I'm glad I did. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed the photos that I was able to capture. And thank you for joining on me on the adventure. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, you know, share it with friends if you like, and make sure and hit that subscribe button so you can continue to Follow along with my adventures in the field. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.